we have that chant that we repeat re regularly. We're subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death. The purpose of that is not to get you depressed. As the Buddha said to one of his students, the body may grow sick, but the mind doesn't have to be sick. The body can grow old, but the mind doesn't have to be old. The body dies, but the mind doesn't die. What does it mean not to be sick, or for the mind not to be sick, even when the body is sick? You learn how not to focus on the illness and look after the well-being of the mind. When the Buddha was sick, he made a practice of spreading goodwill to all beings. He wasn't thinking just about his own illness. In his case, he had been wounded. He had goodwill for the person who wounded him. And from there, he went to all beings. And so the body, you have to realize it's not yours. It's something you've borrowed for the time being. At some point, you have to give it back. So you want to get the best use out of it, but there are times when it doesn't offer you much to work with. That's when you have to focus specifically on the mind to make sure at least the mind is in good shape. So whatever happens to the body, the mind is not disturbed, the mind isn't harmed. This is why we work with the breath. Now, the breath, of course, is a part of the body, but it is the part of the body that's most responsive to the mind. You can breathe long, you can breathe short, deep, shallow, heavy, light. You can breathe in a way that helps to bring things in the body into balance, or at the very least gives you some spot in the body where it's comfortable. As a John, John Lee once said, if every spot in your body were painful, you wouldn't be able to stay. You'd die. So the fact that you're still alive means there's some place in the body where it's okay. Try to find that spot. Focus your attention there. And to whatever extent you can spread the well-being from that spot, okay, let it spread. And if it doesn't spread very far, at least you've got a good place to stay. Because the mind doesn't have to get worked up about things that it can't control. And that's one of the things we have to admit about the body. There are times when it lies in our control, and we get so used to that that when it resists our control, we get frustrated. But again, think of it as borrowed goods that are not working very well. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's like windows. So make use of what you can out of it. There was an old woman in Thailand I heard of who'd gone with a friend. The friend had cancer. She went to see a John Mahabu and he gave her Dharma talks, 80 Dharma talks in all. And the old woman went along because she was a doctor. She could look after the friend, retired doctor. When she came back, after a couple months, the friend died, and they had all these tapes of the talks. So she decided to squeeze what she could out of her old body, in other words, squeeze the goodness. So she transcribed all the talks, 80-some talks, two huge volumes when she was done. So when parts of the body don't cooperate, well, focus on the ones that do cooperate and see what goodness you can squeeze out of them. And that way, when you have to hand back these borrowed goods, you've gotten the best you can out of them. What you hand back doesn't really matter anymore. It'll just be earth, water, wind, fire. But you've got the goodness of the mind that you've squeezed out of the body, and that's what counts. <laughs>